lights, camera, storage, action. So thank you Mr. Adam for speaking to us. We have Mr. Adam from Nutanix and we're going to talk about the presence at Jitex. Uh, so thank you once again for speaking to us. Fantastic. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. We would like to start with a brief about your theme of participation at Jitex this year. Yeah, so can you believe this is our eighth consecutive year at Jitex. It's absolutely flown by. At every time I come, I'm always astounded by the energy levels in the room. Uh, and it's all about clearly meeting with partners and customers. Now, Key themes this year, very similar to last year, hybrid multi-cloud, top of the agenda for most customers. And our stand will very much focus on, on that. So we have three value propositions that we're talking to customers and partners about. The first value proposition is hybrid cloud management with NC2. And that's about providing a cloud operating system for uh, an operating model, I should say, for customers to enable their applications and data regardless of where it is, and giving them that flexibility of cloud choice. Okay. Second area is all around uh, Nutanix database management services. Every customer we now know is a software company. They're trying to develop applications. Every application needs a database and that becomes complex to manage. So on the Nutanix stand, customers can come and see how we remove 90% of that management complexity around databases. And our final value proposition is around NUS, so Nutanix Unified Storage. And that's about consolidating uh, files, objects, and uh, uh, sand storage into a single device and delivering that through Nutanix. So there are key themes this year. They'll be what we focus on. Now, you may have seen that the stand looks very different, and that's because uh, we're using this as an opportunity to release our new brand. As the company evolves, as the market evolves, it's important that we maintain our leadership position and demonstrate that to our new branding. Okay. You also started your new fiscal year. So what sort of changes have you made for the channel? Uh, lots of changes uh, this year, Chris. So I think last time we met, uh, we focused on the importance of ensuring that partners can profit throughout the customer lifecycle. So land, adopt, expand, and redo. And everything we do from an elevate partner program perspective is focused on that. Now, it's also important that we maintain a level of consistency. So we're retaining our new logo rebate for partners. But what we are doing is we're enhancing the payout that we get for individual incentives around new logo acquisition. So this is a um, rebate that focuses on rewarding the partner seller and the partner pre-sales person on a deal. And we're paying up to 2% of the deal value or $7,500 to a good per seller per SE within the partner organization. So we're rewarding the individual sellers to help a partner scale. Cool them. On top of that, we've also enhanced our deal registration protection. So if you register a deal now with Nutanix, we offer 22% upfront deal registration protection, we're therefore enhancing the front end margin uh, for partners. So we're implementing both or impacting both the front end and the back end margin. But it doesn't stop there, Chris. If you're one of our top partners, we've increased uh, the outperformance rebate. So as you grow with Nutanix year over year, you can earn more money through our rebate structure. And finally, we've implemented a new customer segment to be led by channel. So we've determined uh, that over the last two years, we've built up a level of autonomy within our park community okay. where partners can lead deals independently. Now, when you bring a deal to Nutanix and you lead that sale independently, we want to reward you for doing that. So we've introduced the channel-led rebate that rewards partners for taking the lead in, uh, in processing those deals within that channel-led segment. Okay. But we've also built our dedicated resource center to help them do that. So we have a dedicated team of internal sellers and this is to support the partners as they go on that journey of becoming more autonomous. So, that happens. so incredibly rich at the front end in processing deals, adopting the software and expanding into new areas of the market. Okay. But what about rewards? So we've introduced a robust incumbency policy around our redoors process. So okay, if you're the type of partner that manages the customer lifecycle, ensures the customer has adopted that software and renews our time, look at then we have an incumbency policy that provides a 15% uh, discount it. advantage for you as the incumbent partner. Okay. And so if you're processing renewals on time, 
you're making uh, money or you're profiting on Nutanix all the way through that customer market. Okay. Cycle. Land, adopt, expand every day. Okay. And uh, when I talk about your channel partners and customers, when you speak to them, your conversations uh, might revolve around new trends and technologies. Um, um, what sort of opportunities do you see for new Phoenix in that perspective? Yeah, so uh, Joytex has been fantastic okay. for the conversations that we've been involved in. Uh, I think the very first thing, there's a lot of talk around the VMware acquisition by Boardcom. So that's top of mind for every customer and every partner that I've spoken to. Uh, and I think if you're a partner out there and you're concerned around the acquisition of what it means for you, then I would say talk to the new Tenix team. Now, okay. uh, I think that presents a, a huge opportunity for our partner base, but it also presents a lot of risk for them as well. There's a lot of uncertainty around what it means for their business. Will those customers remain customers of that partner? Will they go direct? Are VMware going to continue investing in innovation around the portfolio? And what does it mean for what they're delivering for their customers? So that's obviously a top topic and a top trend. Okay. And again, we're here to support partners through that uh, through that journey and customers through that journey as well. But now we've had four key announcements uh, most recently. So we announced a global strategic partnership with uh, Cisco, okay. uh, where we will be working with Cisco on their UCS platform and their InterSight Ivory Cloud Manager with the Nutanix platform. Okay. And that presents a fantastic opportunity, particularly around the hyperplex space as Cisco um, look to position Nutanix as their default proposition there. No. Uh, we've released GT, uh, GPT in a box, which is our AI proposition. So as customers take their first steps into AI, and are looking at bringing their IA framework that they've modeled on clouds and augmenting that on-premise with their own data and their own IP. We have a perfect solution for customers and partners to help customers to really uh, realize the value of AI at Barkin. Uh, we've enhanced our cybersecurity proposition with data lens. So we're now able to help customers detect and block a cybersecurity attack on their data within 20 minutes. And then we have the capability within our portfolio to help the customers recover from that. So good. And then the final piece is what we call Project Beacon. So our vision is to make applications and data independent of the infrastructure that they sit on. Okay. Now, you can move applications and data today, um, but it's quite difficult because the PaaS models that most companies uh, empower their developers with to quickly develop and ship applications typically ties them in to a particular cloud. And therefore, our vision with Project Beacon is to free that up and enable them to develop applications once and deploy them wherever they need to as, as things progress and move. Uh, you mentioned uh, GPT in a box. Uh, so what sort of advantages do partners have considering the theme at Jitex this year? Fantastic. So it's a great question. I think the first thing I would say to any partner is you've got to go and educate yourself. This is a new area of the market. It's fairly nascent. I think customers are figuring out what AI can mean for their business and how they can use it. And we typically see several use cases, chatbots, fraud prevention, uh, reading documentations for legal yeah. discovery, that kind of thing. So figure out what the use case is and develop your point of view, I would say, as a partner. So and good. then as you figure that out, you will, uh, you will work through and understand that what customers are doing is they're developing their AI frameworks in the cloud. So they're using the cloud agility to process that compute power uh, and they're delivering their AI frameworks as a first model in the cloud. But then they need to bring that on-premise to fine-tune that model with their own data sets and their own IP. They don't want to put their public, their private data in the public cloud and make it available for everyone. And that's where the Nutanix value proposition sits. Okay. Because as the customers bring those AI frameworks back on-premise and look to fine-tune those models with their own IP and their own data, either at the core or at the edge, that's perfect place for the Nutanix GPT uh, in a box solution. And that's what we're working with the partners uh, to answer the neighbor. Okay. Uh, thank you, Adam, for speaking to us. Nice having you with us today. Great. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you.